Good morning. I'm Mark Whiting. I'm the Dean of the College of Biological Sciences, and I'd like to welcome you to the uh, virtual uh, College of Biological Sciences welcome event this morning, and welcome all of you to campus virtually. Welcome to the entering class of 2024 and for the transfer students, the class of 2022. I know that many of you did not get to participate in a commencement or graduation event this year, but I'm looking forward to participating in a great event with you when you finish your studies here at UC Davis. As you can see in the slide, or you might see in the little box with the talking head, I'm Mark Whiney, the dean in the middle here. On the left is Michelle Igo. Uh, Michelle is the Associate Dean for Undergraduate Education Programs. Uh, she is unavailable today as she is ill. But on the call with me and will be helping me answer your questions is Ebony Blackwell. Ebony is the Director of the Biology Academic Success Center, the uh, centralized advising center that mo you should have interacted with over the summer as you were getting registered for courses. I do want to note at the bottom of the slide here, uh, to, uh, the reminder to start an entering your questions into the Q&A box, which is up and running here on this Zoom call. And we'll, some of those answers will be, uh, some of those questions will be answered right in the box, or uh, Ebony or I will answer them after our short presentation here. On the next slide, you'll see the list of majors. I kind of wanted to keep our presentation a bit simple this morning and hit three highlights that are, I think are of interest to you as entering students. The College of Biological Sciences is made up of five academic departments, three research centers or institutes, and we have close relationships with another, a number of others, colleges and schools here on the expansive University of California Davis campus. But from your perspective, we offer the listed majors here um, from biological sciences down the list of plant biology. And you'll take together the same set of core courses in the life sciences and the general sciences, and then specialized courses that in any one of these majors that you'll be pursuing with us in the future. So even though we have five academic departments, the faculty in those departments work collaboratively together to offer core gen majors like genetics and genomics. We don't actually have a department of genetics and, and genomics, but we have a number of faculty who are specialists in that area and offer this specialized and interesting uh, major among all the ones listed here. On the next slide, I wanted to give you a little bit of a sense of space. Since the majority of you are not in Davis with us, uh, at the beginning of the school year, um, I wanted to show you on the map here of the campus where you might find the heart or the core of the College of Biological Sciences. So there's a big word there, it says quad, that is the quad, and this memorial center's over there, a lot of student activities there. Downtown Davis would be off the right side of the map. The, can the College of Biological Sciences is more on the west side of campus in that circle, and the next slide, is a zoom in to show the main building circled in red that make up uh, the places that you once were all back in person will be spending time with us in the College of Biological Sciences. The science lab building there is where the teaching labs are when you get to participate in those. Uh, the Dean's Office is in Life Sciences, now going to be called Green Hall, there towards the lower left of the red circled buildings and the other buildings our uh, research uh, space with some classroom space. Important to those of you who are on campus, um, are in Davis uh, for this quarter and will be coming to campus, is the what looks like a parking lot on the left side there with a smiley face on it. That's actually a parking garage. And on the ground level, that is where the uh, sampling um, station is, or kiosk as it's being called, uh, for your uh, sampling for screening for COVID infection. And uh, Ebony will speak a little bit about that. Also important to uh, students once we're on campus, uh, in the upper left here is our pavilion. That is where um, uh, the gym is and the uh, exercise equipment. And, and a lot of students enjoy going there. There's also a flu clinic there where you can get a flu shot right now. And a few other highlights like the new Latitude Dining Hall at the bottom there with a smiley face right across from most of our buildings, a great place to grab a meal, both grab, grab, uh, grab and go 
and when we can do it again, sit down dining inside. So on the next slide, what about research experience? So the three things I wanted to hit on in that I think are potentially most important to you, the majors and, and the course of studies that you can follow, which you've already become involved in speaking with your advisor. And then number two is experiential learning. Coming to a research one university, meaning a research university with a high level of uh, research activity, federal and private funding for research, is an attraction to students who want to get into the lab or do, into the field to do actual hands-on research work. Of course, in the current environment, that's not possible, but we do hope to ramp up those um, uh, activities and, and make them available as we go through this academic year. But in preparation for that, you will learn Sunday morning uh, in the Sunday morning session with Dr. Susan Keene about a number of activities being launched by different departments to connect students to research groups to attend uh, virtual journal clubs or uh, research uh, gatherings and maybe even participate in some research activities that can be done remotely because there are parts of our work such as genomics that can be done from anywhere. So um, Dr. Keene will speak to that in um, detail Sunday morning, but I did want you to know that this is for the front of our mind in thinking about your experience during your first year here with us in Davis. And then on the next slide, um, I'm going to turn it over to Ebony now, but I did want to mention, I forgot to mention that uh, some of you may have um, experienced internet outages yesterday. There was some serious problems around Davis. It seems okay so far, but if we do crash here in the rest during the rest of the hour, uh, we'll be recording this session and, or we'll re-record it as necessary and make it available to you. But with that statement, I do want to say welcome. We're going to work really hard and the faculty have been working tremendously hard along with the advisors uh, staff that you'll meet to uh, make our virtual fall quarter and what is likely to be a mostly virtual winter quarter uh, is valuable in, in, uh, to you and is uh, important in your educational career as possible and we'll be talking about that during the orientation event of the coming days so thank you for your time i'll stay on to take questions but uh ebony let's talk to tell them about what's going to happen this week thank you dean whining as dean mentioned my name is ebony blackwell i am the director of the biology academic success center also known as BASC which is where all of you should have had your Aggie advising sessions with one of our phenomenal advisors over the summer. Our team, along with campus orientation, has been working diligently to provide you guys with an awesome virtual orientation welcome week. Um, so just so that you have an overview today, you're in your fall welcome. So good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're joining us from. And then on Sunday, you're going to have a couple of sessions that you can also log into. We have a, a session that is specifically tailored towards our first year students at 10 a.m. And you guys should have received registration links along with this one so um, that you can log in. And then at 11, we'll have one specifically for transfer students. And in both of those sessions, we'll have advisors, some peer advisors and faculty members there to tell you about things like research and how to be successful as a student, and connect you with different campus resources. And then that evening, we'll have a presentation by some CBS clubs and organizations that will provide you with some information about how to get involved with them, um, both virtually and once you get back on campus. On Tuesday, the BASC is going to be hosting all day virtual advising for you all to log into. Um, and then our HPA, Health Professions Advising, will be doing a session for you all in the morning. And in the afternoon, we're going to have a presentation by the Global Learning Hub to share with you ways that you can get involved in things like study abroad and different experiential learning opportunities, both while we are remote and once we get back to campus. 
One thing that's really important for you all to know, especially for our folks that are going to be on campus this fall, are about the different resources that will be available to you to make sure that you're staying up to date on everything COVID and UC Davis. Um, so one of the things I recommend, go ahead and take a picture of this slide so that you know the different websites that are available. Um, these are going to provide you with information and updates for both you as a student and your family members. Um, it's going to talk to you about monitoring surveys or monitoring your symptoms. One thing that all students on campus are required to do is take the daily symptom survey. Um, and then also each student on campus is going to be responsible for making sure that they go to the testing kiosk and get tested for COVID-19. So also I'd like to share with you all about different ways to be successful and get involved. Um, each student for one of their first biology courses um, are required to take biz 2 b um, There's um, bio launch that goes with our bio courses and it's like a special seminar for incoming students to um, connect with faculty, their peers, and know about different things going on on campus. But we also have a really special program called Mentor Collective that pairs incoming students up with a peer mentor that they can connect with. Um, peer mentorship is really phenomenal because it connects you with um, different resources on campus from a student perspective. They connect you with advice and their own personal experiences. So if you haven't signed up for Mentor Collective, that is definitely something that I encourage you to do so that you have that one-on-one -on -one support from one of your peers that have already gone through their first couple of years at UC Davis. So this is your BASC team of advisors. Um, since we've gone virtual, we've had a couple of updates. You may notice that I'm not there, um, but we also have about three new advisors on our team that aren't pictured here. Um, in addition to your academic advising team, um, the BASC also has an embedded um, health counselor, um, Megan Brown, who is there for all of your mental health needs and counseling services. And I really encourage you to take advantage of, take advantage of her services as well. So in the BAS, even though we can't be with you in person this fall, we are for sure still providing all of our services to you all virtually. In this fall, you have the option of signing up for two different types of advising services. We have our express advising, but we also have our appointments. Appointments are what you guys should have encountered when you logged in for Aggie advising over the summer. It's a up to 30 minute appointment with an advisor that you can talk about some of your in-depth needs as a student. But this fall, we'll also be bringing to you express advising. Express advising, if you were on campus, would be the opportunity to just drop into our office, ask some quick questions to one of our academic advisors, get in, get out. While we can't drop into our office, we still wanted to be able to provide you with this service this fall. So we've created Express Advising online for you, where you can go to the BASC website. So take a picture of this screen too. You can go to the BASC website, it's listed there, bass.biology.ucdavis.edu. You can log in and sign up for a quick 15 minute session with an advisor. The topics are limited of what you can talk to in these express advising sessions versus an actual appointment because they're meant to be a bit quicker. So these are the options for express advising listed here. These are your get in, get out type questions. Um, and what you do, you go in on Tuesdays between 9 and 12 or Wednesdays between 1 and 4, sign up and a BASC advisor will either call you at the number that you have on file or if you opt in for a quick Zoom appointment, when it's your turn in line, they'll pull you, send you a Zoom link, and you'll be able to log into the Zoom information for a quick advising session. Um, again, these are your quick questions and concerns, anything that will take 15 minutes or less. If it's going to take longer than that, we advise you to sign up for a BASC appointment with one of your advisors. Those are 30-minute sessions, and you can book them two weeks in advance. So if you, when you're looking for us, if you go to the um, main CBS website, what you do is click on um, undergraduate advising and it will kick you over to the BASC website. But also you guys as incoming students should have received a link 
for um, newly admitted students. So you should pretty much be familiar with it. You're going to log into our services the same way you did for your Aggie advising. You'll click on the advising option. You'll either select that you want to schedule an appointment or that you want to sign up for express advising. And it's easy as that. But if you have any issues, you can always call and leave a voicemail on the BASC number. And you can also email CBS at, um, CBS undergrads at ucdavis.edu and get questions answered that way as well. And make sure that you're submitting your final Q&As before we jump into the Q&A section because there will also be a couple of um, students that are selected to win a $25 gift card to the UC Davis store and we don't want you to miss out on that opportunity. Ebony, thank you very much. And I do see that we have 42 uh, questions so far in the Q&A. Some are getting answered uh, in text by uh, Victor, who's running that. I want to thank Ebony, Shannon, Victor, Patey, and Mary Ann for putting this together. And I think, Victor, you're going to serve as MC now for questions. So hit us. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Victor. I am an academic advisor here with the Biology Academic Success Center, and I will be um, moderating the Q&A part of this presentation. So feel free to continue entering your questions into the Q&A chat. We have a lot of questions, so we can get started right away. Um, our first question, a student asks, um, how do I know if biology is for me? Well, that I will try to have a crack at that. And then um, maybe Ebony will want to add something. I, I, that's a great question. Uh, college is an awesome time to uh, explore your interest and figure out what's for you. I think that there's two pieces to it. One is taking some of the courses and starting to learn about what modern biologists are thinking about um, and what the... Uh, questions are and what the area of work encompasses. The biological, the College of Biological Sciences is really kind of special that way because we're just a College of Biological Sciences and the faculty span the breadth of all of biology. So you learn about all different areas in biological research and in the discipline. But the other piece of it is to think about what sort of careers interest you and whether uh, a degree in biology will serve you well to pursue those careers. So you can work with the academic advisor about that. You'll be learning about career options and uh, possibilities for um, biologists and, and students who get their degrees with us in the BioLaunch program uh, during the fall quarter. And then, which will also include getting you in contact with the uh, internship and career center. So you'll start to learn about those resources on campus as well to help you think about what your career might be if you're a biologist. You also get to meet uh, the health professions advising unit. So the campus has a dedicated unit for advising students interested in going on into a health profession. And you'll meet Joanne Snap and her team during orientation and then again during bio launch. And they will help you explore careers in health professions specifically. So I think at this early stage, we're going to have a lot of opportunities to, for you to learn about biology writ large and to learn about career options. And hopefully that will help you find your way as you have this opportunity to explore uh, as a new student here at UC Davis. Ebony? You know, that's a good question. And I just really encourage you, like Dean Whining said, to get involved and be engaged with different opportunities because exploration is what's gonna really be able to tell you if this is something that you're passionate about. And that's what I really always encourage students to do. Pursue something that you're gonna be passionate about and that you feel like you're going to have a long-term interest in, because it's a long life and you don't wanna have a career that you're just miserable in. Um, so there's so many options though out there of what you can do with biology, whether it be working in academia or becoming a research scientist, um, joining one of the professional careers, such as being a doctor or a veterinarian, a dentist. Um, there's so many options. I have a bachelor's and a master's in biology. And here I am as your director of academic advising, because I love working with students in STEM, but I didn't want to work in a research lab. So 
definitely explore and think about what, what you want to do with your future, but be engaged, get involved in some clubs, get involved in research opportunities, do some summer programs, definitely do some studying abroad. Um, there are a lot of opportunities out there when it comes to STEM and something like biology will open a lot of doors for you. So I just encourage you to think about those types of careers that you think you might be interested in long term. And, and do some activities, some internships and whatnot that will help you really realize if that's what you're going to want to do long term. Thank, Thank you. Thank you both. Um, we have a lot of questions. Um, if we don't get to all of these, um, do not worry. We will email. Um, we will review all the questions. We, we will be able to save them. So we will kind of review all of them. Um, afterwards, but we do have a lot of questions regarding research and how that will look like um, during the fall quarter specifically. So students ask, and I'll kind of group these together, how will labs or research be carrying on while school remains open or remote? Um, and will we possibly get in-person labs for um, the academic year? Okay, Victor, thank you. This is um, uh, a challenging subject for the campus during the pandemic. The research labs are operating um, at reduced capacity, about one third normal occupancy right now. That is largely focused on access for our graduate students and postdoctoral fellows who need to move their research programs as part of their ongoing training. Some undergraduates who've already are experienced in labs, are able to continue on in labs currently, um, but it, it, we're not in a position to be taking new students into labs, at least during the fall quarter. Um, the campus is looking very closely at expanding access to research labs um, with the testing protocol that's being rolled out along with the daily symptom survey and uh, continued low infection rates here in Yolo County, which might change our status. So it's a very uh, fluid situation. I don't have a solid answer for you. We need to see how uh, things go forward with the pandemic in our, in, in our local environment of Davis and Yolo County. Uh, but the campus is hopeful to be able to expand um, uh, our research lab access through the school year, but I don't know what that looks like yet. As far as the teaching labs, same sort of situation. The college right now is doing, this quarter is offering one upper division lab course for people who need this lab to graduate. Um, and we're seeing how that works with social distancing and limited number of students in the lab at a given time. And hopefully we'll have more of those upper division lab courses um, next quarter and, uh, and into spring. We do not know when we're gonna be able to bring back more of the, of the entry level um, uh, lab courses, but this is clearly one of the things that the Dean's office team, along with the Office of Research, are really focused on in trying to make available to students as, as soon as possible. But uh, there's a lot of, um, but as you may know from wherever you are and, and the situation in your local environment, the public health authorities have a lot to say about what we can and cannot do. And we have to, the campus has to work closely with Yolo County about what's possible. So uh, we will be in constant communication as, as we go through the school year and the situation hopefully uh, allows for more and more access to research labs. A, a similar question with this, a student asks, are research experiences available to undocumented students? Absolutely. I did see that one in the feed, and thank you for that question. Uh, some research experiences will have a stipend and pay students, and that may have certain challenges, but uh, many are for credit, and uh, there you would take it like a course, you would take any other course, um, and so yes those research experiences uh, would be available. 
about making an appointment with an academic advisor. Um, the question reads, um, will I be able, when will appointment with a major specific advisor and also a student asks, has not been available throughout the summer, when will this be, begin? Great question. Um, all incoming students were limited to one academic advising session. So one Aggie advising session during the summer so that our office could get through the opportunity to provide each student um, their one session. Um, now that those are completed, come Tuesday, the appointments are gonna open up for students to start scheduling additional. So while you were limited this summer and something we had to do to manage the workload, you'll now be able to schedule unlimited um, appointments with your advisors or drop in unlimited um, times for express advising sessions. Now Tuesday will only be for express advising sessions, but that will be when you can finally start scheduling appointments for future sessions so that you can um, start setting up those um, appointments, those one-on-one -on -one 30 minute sessions with advisors. Um, now you can only schedule them two weeks out. So if for some reason you log in and there's not an appointment availability to you, just keep checking back because I'm sure once we get started, it's gonna be super busy for students wanting to get in, both for you all and our continuing students um, while we're working our way through the fall. So always check back if you don't see an appointment available to you. Um, for because it is two week window, but express advising will start on Tuesday and you can drop in for those sessions as much as you need to. If you're looking for an in depth like academic planning session with your major advisor, you will need to schedule an appointment for that. That will not be a 15 minute express advising session. Thank you. We have been getting a lot of questions regarding nurse. So are minors uh, an option for students? By when can they declare a minor or by when should they start looking into pursuing a minor? I think that's a really great thing to schedule an, um, an advising appointment with your advisor about. Start thinking about what other things you're interested in, what things maybe align closely to the major you're doing, that it might be an easy minor to add on, or if you want something that's completely different and you already know that you're interested in that, talk to your advisor about it. You can look through the catalog so that you can know the requirements for that, so that you can start building an academic plan that will help you accomplish both your major and your minor within the unit cap. Thank you. We have been getting, um, there's a um, question that reads, um, what services BASC differ from HPA? Another good question. So BASC is specifically your um, academic advising for your major. HPA will provide you advising related to any health profession that you're interested in getting in. So say you wanna to go to medical school or veterinarian school, you can connect with them about the requirements that you may need. You can, um, they do some MCAT prep. Um, they'll know more about the admissions for those professional schools and they'll be able to help you build your trajectory towards that. While BASC is specifically going to help you make sure you have your major and college requirements that you need for graduation. So we're going to help you build your um, schedules and talk about different classes that you need for your major or for your minor. We're going to do your degree checks. We're going to um, process all of your petitions and other paperwork that you may need related to your progress, your academic progress in your major. HPA does not advise on your academic progress towards graduation. They are strictly there to help you with your needs for any professional schools post-graduation. While you meet with them while you're progressing towards your degree, they are just strictly there to help you know what the requirements are for that professional degree, what you need to do, what types of tests you may need to do, what type of studying you may need to do to prepare for that. But they're not there to advise you on any of your academic progress. Thank you. Thanks. Let's see, we, we have some uh, questions coming in. Um, and I'll, I'll, what 
what should we do if we are struggling with our STEM courses? What are the resources if I am struggling with courses? And then I'll go ahead and ask this as well from another student to be successful in my STEM. Would you like me to take this one, Dean Whining? Why don't you start? Yes, thanks. Okay. Um, first, I want you all to know that the first quarter for both incoming first year students and transfer students can often be a trying quarter, you know, remote or in person. Um, you're switching many of you from semester systems over to quarter systems. Um, and then, you know, you're going from high school to college. It's quicker pace. It's possibly more rigorous than what you encountered. So I don't want anybody to get discouraged if they have a, a struggle while they're transitioning. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to reach out for help. Um, so while HPA is there for you and BASC is there for you for all your um, academic needs, we also have tutoring resources on campus, um, different counseling and support services that are there to help you. We have different cultural and identity centers that are there to help you that all provide a number of resources there to you. So um, I think that it's really good to build out an academic plan. Um, think about time management and how to balance a schedule and balance the, this course load that you're experiencing for the first time in a quarter system. Um, and really plan out your goals and what your visions are so that that can be what roots you and is your foundation to hold you accountable while you're tapping into those resources. Connect with your faculty members. Don't be afraid of them and your TAs. Talk to them. Ask questions. Send them emails. They are there to help you progress and, you know, ultimately the gatekeepers of knowledge, in my opinion, when it comes to helping you learn the subjects. So don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid to reach out to them and connect with your faculty members and your TAs of the courses that you're in. Definitely connect with the virtual tutoring um, services that are going to be offered to you this fall. And definitely connect with an academic advisor to build out your academic plan. So you know what your goals are, you know what you're working towards, and you know how you need to learn how to balance and do your time management. Um, so those are those are some of my key components that I always tell students that they need to think about. Um, STEM courses can be intimidating to a lot of students, but don't get discouraged. And definitely, if you're tapping into the resources around you, that's going to help you if you do encounter any roadblocks. To know people that can help you hurdle those roadblocks, but also know people that can advocate for you should you find yourself in some academic difficulty. And if the, your advisor knows you and knows the work that you're putting in, they're gonna be the people that help you keep progressing so that you can stay with us and whatnot. So definitely connect with people on campus, connect with the resources that are available to you. Think about your time management and how to balance your schedule, even more so for our students are not on campus and may find themselves in like a distracting environment, being at home and other people might be learning in your homes with you and whatnot. It's really going to be important to have good time management um, and accountability skills um, while you're balancing your STEM courses. Thank you, Ebony. I'd like to uh, add that was all great advice. Uh, we do like to reiterate that the transition for many students to a quarter system is challenging. The first midterm will be upon you before you realize it in a 10 week uh, system. Uh, so you uh, do really need the time management and um, not putting off work is a, a good strategy. Uh, through orientation uh, events this weekend and into next week, you'll be introduced to a lot of the services that are available to you. Um, as Ebony listed. I think the one additional one I want to mention to you uh, or remind you about that Ebony mentioned is the Mentor Collective. We do know from speaking with mentors or mentor and mentee pairs that academic struggles is a, a, a top topic for the mentor and mentee to be discussing. And the mentor is someone who's here and is successfully going through one of the majors in the college and probably has a lot of advice and for their mentee about uh, time management strategies, study strategies, or resources on campus that are available to them. So that's a, an additional piece of uh, support that we offer you. Um, and do ask questions. I know that for many students, it may be a little difficult to, if so called, advocate for yourself. But in the current uh, virtual environment, hopefully it's not too difficult to send an email to your faculty 
to your professor or TA and let them know what you're struggling with and let them help you. Uh, if it's technology issues through to particular parts of the content, let, let a faculty member or a TA know and, and they'll uh, offer you support. Thank you. We have a lot of questions regarding BioLaunch, um, regarding Biz05. So uh -huh. students are wondering if you can elaborate a little bit more on what Biz05 is, as well as how do you join uh, BioLaunch? Okay, so BioLaunch is the, the name for uh, the whole program uh, available to um, students as they join the biological College of Biological Sciences as a new first year or transfer student. Mentor Collective is part of the BioLaunch uh, activities. BISO 5, the course, is another piece. The course is a weekly uh, meeting of, of students. There may be more sections than that. Um, and it uh, has a whole number of components to it. Uh, the, like I said, HPA will come in and talk about health profile professions advising. Some of the faculty will come in and talk about their research or how to get uh, into research uh, activities when that is available on campus. Uh, there'll be uh, presentations about um, other services like in, um, internship and career center and uh, time management strategies. And so it's, it's kind of a, a course that is designed to offer students uh, a great amount of information about the opportunities that are available to them here at UC Davis at, while they're undergraduates and to help them learn about the services available for them planning past their, their time here, like health professions advising in the intern and, and, and career center. Um, so uh, it, it, it uh, while orientation covers a lot of material across campus in a very short amount of time in the next few days, BioLaunch is more focused on CBS students and spread over the quarter to cover a lot of topics and spend a little more time on them, particularly with uh, Q&A sessions like, like this, so students can learn uh, about uh, different services and career alternatives as we move uh, through the quarter with them in, bio, in that course. Ebony, do you want to add anything? No, that pretty much sums it up. I know there was a question about, um, is it too late to sign up for it? Um, it's not too late for sure to sign up for a um, mentor collective. You can still do that. And um, I can try and get out um, an email communication again to students that just reiterates how to get involved with mentor collective um, in the next week. And then, um, whether or not there's room left in the sections for the seminars, I do not have an answer to that for those who are asking um, if it's too late to register for that. Um, it would depend if there's still seats in the sections. I think we yeah. should be able to make it happen. Yeah. We will look at that. Yeah. So we do have a lot of questions coming in regarding study abroad. So students are wondering if you can discuss what is it what study abroad options are available for students, um, specifically CBS students? Um, so if you can just maybe talk a little bit about study abroad and if that's an option for students, especially given a lot of students are wondering if we have an idea of when they will be able to study abroad. Um, so if any of our panelists could elaborate on that. If the students will get their questions answered about study abroad at the Tuesday afternoon session with the Global Learning Hub. I think that's the best place to learn more about study abroad options. Of course, things are limited right now um, with COVID and traveling abroad and whatnot. And they're going to share more about the options of what can be done virtually and then what will be available to them once our borders and whatnot open back up again. I, I would like to add um, that you will have that session during orientation. Uh, maybe some of the questions are from the point of view that for STEM students, it can often be difficult to study abroad because we have sequenced courses and it, it's hard to step away from campus for a quarter or longer. Um, the 
College of Biological Sciences has worked to have summer options of courses available of, uh, in the study abroad program. So you will learn about those Tuesday, uh, a decision of the status of summer 2021 courses are not, is not known at this point. But uh, that is a strategy that the college has been developing to make study abroad uh, available to our students is to do it through uh, summer courses abroad. Thank you. We have a question from a student. Um, they weren't able to register for courses. At this point, who can they contact for assistance? I would connect with an academic advisor, either try and schedule an advising appointment or drop in on Tuesday for express advising, email um, our front desk at CBS undergrads at ucdavis.edu for any uh, immediate pressing concerns. We might be able to help them that way as well. But I would definitely, if they're not registered for any courses, um, please make sure you log into the BASC website and try and schedule an actual appointment session ASAP so you can um, connect with an advisor about what courses you should be in and we can try and help navigate the situation for you. Thank you. We do have some questions from students regarding double majoring. Is this an option for CBS students to pursue a double major? So it is an option. It, there are some limitations. It depends on if you can get the double major done underneath the unit cap that's laid out. Um, also, if it's two CBS majors, there's, a, there's overlap rules where so much percentage of your classes can't be taken for both majors. If that's the case, no, you can't. Um, if it's a major with another college, yes, you can definitely double major still. We just need to make sure that you're able to get to graduation within the unit cap that is set um, for students. And your academic advisor can definitely look at that with you and help um, build an academic plan that maps out your quarters and what you need to take to do that so that you can stay on track. Thank you. We do have a, we have a great question that came in. Um, how do I get in contact with the mental health counselor for Basque? Good question. I'm glad you asked. Um, you can email cbsundergrads at ucdavis.edu and we can help connect you with the um, mental health counselor. Her name's Megan Brown. You can also email her directly. Her information is on our website and she can help you set up an appointment. Um, you can talk to your academic advisor. We will help you set up an appointment. Um, so there's a bunch of options. And as long as you get in touch with us, we will make sure that you get in touch with her and that you get an appointment. We make sure that she's setting up her own appointments um, because it is supposed to be private and discretionary between you and her, but we will make sure that you all are able to get an appointment, whether you go directly through her or contact us. We'll make sure it happens. Awesome, thank, thank you. you. We have a great question from a, a student. So the question is, I am a transfer student um, coming from a semester system to the quarter system. How can I best adjust to the quarter system and is it very different or how different from the semester system? It's very different um, primarily because you have a chunk of weeks that in the semester system that don't exist with us. So I think the semester is 16 to 18 weeks, depending on what institution you're at, and we're just 10 weeks. So you have a, a, a good chunk of weeks that you're um, introducing the same amount of material potentially within a shorter amount of time. So you wanna make sure that you're cognizant of that. You're thinking about that in your time management and when you're, you're building out your schedule and your study plans. As Dean Whining mentioned in the quarter system, by week two, you're starting to think about your midterm already. Um, so those first quizzes and exams are going to be upon you very quick and you want to be mindful of those things. Um, so that means like that if you're missing classes or anything like that during your first week, you're already going to be at a huge deficit to that midterm that's going to come up quite quick. So you want to stay on top of your um, timeline, be paying attention to your syllabus so you know when your um, homework assignments are, when your quizzes, when your midterm are, so that you're preparing for those adequately. Don't hesitate to by week one, already start thinking about tutoring services and how to connect with them so that you're studying and preparing for those initial assignments that you're going to encounter quickly in the quarter system. 
Yes, I would agree. And the whole quarter just happens faster. So you really need to be attentive right from the beginning to the syllabus and when there's going to be assignments due and the exams. And uh, there's not really a, a slow ramp up, which might be possible in a semester system. Uh, you need to launch right into it when classes start next week. Thank you both. We have a great question from a student. Um, how the question reads, how should you build good relationships and connections with professors and other faculty? Oh, well, that is a really good question, Victor. Thanks for sending that, uh, uh, asking that one. I think that um, a way to do this is to uh, just take the time to ask them about the material in the course. So if you have a question about material you don't understand or there's a, you wanna know more about a particular topic than at a, a deeper level than the lecture or the materials for the course go into, ask. Um, I mean, the, the faculty are all professional scientists. This is what they do. So students who are, want to come in and talk to them about science, either the science that's being presented in the course, or if you want to ask them about the work being done in their lab, and they all have lab uh, web websites and, and pages up that describe the type of research they do, there, that is a very easy way to engage a faculty member uh, to uh, start to build that relationship is to start talking about the science that they're either teaching or they're doing in their lab. And it can also be a way to learn about whether they have opportunities in their labs when we're completely open again uh, for undergraduates to, to join the research program and what type of work that would be. So I think some level of curiosity uh, about their work uh, to ask them some questions is a great way to start. Yeah, I just wanted to throw in there that Shoot your professors an email, day one, week one, or if you already have their information, go ahead and email them now. Tell them that you're looking forward to their class, if you're looking forward to it. Tell them you're looking forward to it, maybe if you aren't looking forward to it. Um, <laughs> if you have any concerns that you think you want to be transparent about and tell them, whether it might be some connectivity issues or how um, many, like, um, accommodations that you have um, on file with the institution that um, are important to your learning style or anything like that. Share those things with your faculty members so that they're aware of your needs, um, but also have some accountability. Knowing that you've already looked at the syllabus and that you know when things are coming due so that um, you're aware and doing the work on your end and, and making sure that you know, you're, you're taking that step um, to connect with them and interact and be engaged in the, the lectures and discussions and whatnot and show them that you are very interested in your academic success as well, but definitely having conversations with them and just reaching out to them, talking to them. They are people just like we are and they are here and invested in your learning. So um, just try and develop good relationships with them. Thank you both. A, a question we, we got um, similar to what we're discussing is office hours. Um, how are office hours right now, given that we are remote, how do those look like? I would think that they'll vary depending on your faculty member. Um, they should outline that in their syllabus and share more information with you. If they haven't, just feel free to ask them as well. Dean Liney. Yes, I was gonna say the same thing, that some faculty members are running like a Zoom chat room that students can drop in. Uh, they will take uh, personal uh, Zoom meetings as well. Uh, and you can always ask for that if you have a particular issue you wanna discuss um, with the faculty member. Uh, for some of the uh, large courses, also the TAs will be running essentially office hours or online help rooms, which again, would probably be in the style of a Zoom chat room. But if you do want an individual appointment, please ask for it. Um, and you should be able to schedule that as needed. Thank you both. Um, we do have a couple of questions that have come through regarding being on a wait list. So can you, can someone explain um, to students or detail the question is, um, I am on the wait list 
for some courses, when will I know if I am enrolled in the course or off the wait list? I, so it will ultimately depend if there's space available. Some courses with us being um, remote have upped the capacity of students that they're allowing in the class. Some of them have not, depending on what the course is and what they can actually handle student-wise. So um, I personally, I don't know the deadline, Victor or Shannon, if you guys wanna put in the chat for the students of when they'll get the final notification or when it will roll off for them for the wait list. Um, but it ultimately comes down to the availability, the space available in the classroom for even the virtual classroom for students to, to join that. Um, if they are not able to get into it, um, they should receive a notification. Okay, thank yes, you. Yes, it might seem like um, a odd, we, it might, oh, I was just gonna say briefly, it might seem that to sound a little odd about the space in the classroom when we're virtual. We certainly have expanded many classes to being much larger than they would ever be on campus because the virtual space can be so big but we've also had to put more TAs and other resources in to manage those large classes. So we have reduced some of the wait list by ex adding TAs and other resources to manage all the assignments and, and, and office hours that were just asked about like that. So we're still working on that to, to make as uh, many seats, if you will, available in, in classes as possible. Thank you. We had over 430 questions. Um, so if we didn't get to your specific question, um, know that there will be additional events throughout orientation, specifically Sunday, um, Saturday, sorry, tomorrow. Sunday. There will be additional events for, or Sunday, sorry, for um, first year and transfer students specifically. So you can continue asking questions, reaching out to your advisor, we're here to help. Um, but Really quickly, we did mention we had two gift cards to um, two winners. Um, these were chosen at random. Um, the winners for these two gift cards are Christina Harder. That is our first winner, so congratulations. Um, and the second winner is Kevin Campos. Um, so again, that's Christina Harder and Kevin Campos. In the chat, I will be placing my email. Please email me as soon um, as this webinar is over, and then you should be receiving this electronically um, through orientation. Um, at this point, we will um, end the Q&A, um, and then I'll pass it over to Dean Whiney so he can give our closing remarks. Thank you, Victor, and thank you, everyone for being so engaged in our Q&A and posting so many questions. As Victor pointed out, there'll be plenty of information coming through orientation that uh, should answer many of those questions and we will comb through those uh, and make a communication if we need to about the uh, other questions that are in there. Uh, we're doing our best to make for a very uh, fruitful, uh, engaging, uh, exciting quarter for you. Uh, we hope that uh, we will see you in uh, BIS 5 and uh, uh, or the 198 for the transfer students. I thank you for joining us this morning. I want to again thank uh, Ebony for joining us as well and the team that supported this event. Uh, I think the Sunday morning event that, uh, with the college you'll find very valuable. The, many of these questions will be answered and you'll have more time with uh, the advising team in Basque and some of the faculty in the college. So thanks for joining us this morning. Have a busy, fruitful weekend as you learn more about uh, your joining us here at UC Davis and uh, go Aggies. Yes. And I just wanna throw in there that while you only had one advising session this summer, you're gonna have plenty of opportunities to engage with your advisors, ask all the questions that you may have throughout your entire time at UC Davis. So while we didn't get to every question, like Victor and Dean Whiney said, we have more events on the, in the coming days, but also you'll always have access to your advisors um, in the Basque.
All right. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day.